David Barton and Brian Fisher both believe that the First Amendment, specifically the Free Exercise of Religion Clause, doesn't apply to non-Christians. They get this idea from Justice Joseph Story, who wrote that the real object of the First Amendment was not to countenance, much less to advance Mahometanism, or Judaism, or infidelity by prostrating Christianity, but to exclude all rivalry among Christian sects, and to prevent any national ecclesiastical establishment which should give to a hierarchy the exclusive patronage of the national government. First of all, the First Amendment does not prostrate Christianity. It doesn't prostrate any religion. It protects all religions from the state and the state from all religion. The purpose of the amendment was to prevent both the state from corrupting the church and keeping the church from corrupting the state. Fulfilling this purpose makes the countenance of Islam, Judaism, and infidelity entirely necessary because the state can't avoid molesting any religion unless it divorces itself from religion entirely. Of course, Jefferson famously said that the First Amendment erects a wall of separation between church and state. Some folks will point out that this was just in a letter Jefferson wrote, not in a law, and besides, Jefferson was not the main author of the First Amendment. However, in a letter from James Madison to Reverend Jasper Adams, Madison, the person who actually did draft the fucking First Amendment, when speaking of relations between church and state, warned of a tendency to a usurpation on one side or the other, or to a corrupting coalition or alliance between them. In other words, the state corrupts the church, and the church corrupts the state. He recommended that this will best be guarded against by an entire abstinence of the government from interference in any way whatever. In other words, the government should not in any way be involved in religion. A law that was much more explicit on this matter was the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom. This was written by Jefferson and was probably an inspiration for the First Amendment, but even if it wasn't, it certainly should have been because it makes a hell of a lot of sense. It criticizes government endorsement of religion on religious grounds because Almighty God hath created the mind free so all attempts to influence it by temporal punishments or burthens, or by civil incapacitations, tend only to beget habits of hypocrisy and meanness, and therefore are a departure from the plan of the holy author of our religion, who, being lord both of body and mind, yet chose not to propagate it by coercions on either, as was in his almighty power to do. In other words, God doesn't force anyone to practice any religion, or support the practice of any religion, so why should the government? And this certainly wasn't just to prevent discord among Christians. It says, No man shall be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship, place, or ministry whatsoever. None of your tax dollars can go to supporting any religion in any way. It also said that a person should not be deprived of any rights because of their religious belief. Because our civil rights have no dependence on our religious opinions any more than our opinions in physics or geometry. And it also says that all men shall be free to profess and by argument to maintain their opinions in matters matters of religion, and that the same shall in no wise diminish, enlarge, or affect their civil capacities. This prohibits the government from in any way encouraging or discouraging the expression of any opinion anyone may have about religion. This is the kind of thing that at least a few of the Founding Fathers supported. So I have no idea why the words of Justice Story, which were written about a hundred years after America's founding, are somehow a more reliable account of what the Founding Fathers intended than the words of the Founding Fathers themselves.